voicemails too. Good afternoon, Lindsay. Good afternoon, Laurie. We are ready to go whenever you are. We had great feedback, by the way, from the first uh, transactional email, the first part of this. So I'm really excited to see what you're going to do with the second part. Well, hopefully I uh, won't let anyone down. I guess the expectations are high now, right? Uh, what I thought we, sorry? They are very high, so you <laughs> have to really do something fancy today. All right, all right. Let's, uh, let's hope that I have something fancy enough. We're going to try to start with uh, some basics the same way we looked at student manager, you know, we're going to do the same thing with a quick overview of those. We'll talk a little bit about some of the report functions you can use in the student manager emails, and then I'm going to show you guys some examples. So without further ado, if my screen will actually click for me, so there we go. Ace Web emails, you have a lot of options. First one is welcome to the system, which of course somebody signs up, you know, creates an account, an email is generated. Hey, thanks for joining us. Contact us if contact us if you have questions. We also have one for adding to the wait list. That way you're still reaching people even if they didn't actually enroll. You have an opportunity to say, you've been added to the wait list, we will contact you. Share with a friend. The, the old school way of sending messages and sharing things rather than posting them on Facebook was to actually send an email to someone. We do have this option in ACE Web. Marketing campaigns, we are going to talk about those a little more in depth. I'll walk you through the steps of how to set those up. And finally, our registration confirmations. So email basics. They are in your ACE folder. If you are not sure where that is, wait, hang on. There we go. ACE Web is installed on a server somewhere for you in a folder that starts with INET Pub. And buried deep inside that folder is ACE. This is where all of your templates live, everything from you know, your home page to your course status all of it. What we are looking for, and I'm going to go ahead and sort by type, your email templates are all just text files. So it's something that ends in .txt. And all of them have a basic layout. I'll go ahead and open the welcome one for you. There is some plain text. Hopefully also, if, if you can't see the text, if it's too small, just send a message a uh, couple, a little bit of feedback last time was that it was small, so I tried changing the resolution this time. So part of the email template is just text. In this case, we need your email address to log, you know, if you'll need this to log into your account. There are also, similar to student manager emails, there are tags. There are these little things that actually generate the information. You will see these in an ACE web template, always with two pound symbols or hashtags at the beginning and at the end. Moving on. They're pretty simple to edit. You can make very basic changes just by adding some HTML coding, so you could change the color of a certain sentence, you could increase font size, you can add links. Another really simple edit that some of you may or may not already do, you can customize the subject line on some of these emails. Uh, the welcome to the system email is one, catalog request, confirmation, and also office notification. Super simple to do. Let me see if I can blow that up a little bit. On the email templates, and I'll flip back over to one in a second, there is an end tag. Anything below that tag is not going to show up in the message. So we can add some extra bits down there that it will pick up. One of those is the subject. So you would add, you know, start with subject, 
the next line you put in whatever you want that to be and then you close it off now never fear if this might you know if I may be going a little too fast with some of these we have this fantastic health guide and I can't encourage you enough especially when looking at the ACE web email templates take advantage of our guide uh, you, you, know, you can click right on the welcome to system and it will explain to you what every single tag available what it does you know how you might be able to customize it all kinds of things so customizing the subject what it says right now let me see if I have one in here welcome that's the one that I customized uh, this right here the subject if we go back over here what you would add and I'll go ahead and put one in and we'll walk through a sign up real fast let's um this is my customized subject so again after the end tag and this may be something that you would want to use particularly with the welcome email and with a confirmation email so I've added a subject I've saved it now let's go where are we here local host go and we will go ahead and create a new account and it's going to tell me that I have a million ones in there that's fine throw a password in there I hope I typed it right and go through Let's set that one up. We got to fill it in. I'm also going to go ahead and check a couple of boxes here for interest. And then I'm going to add my account. And here we go. This is my customized subject. So if that's something that you want to change, it is available for you. Okay. What do we have next? talked about welcome send to a friend that's another one that you really might want to take advantage of and we find that in ace web of course I don't have that on there because that would have made this too easy you can add a link to your course sorry I was gonna say we're still doing a round of applause for the subject oh. so you can take a minute <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll take a second for that then actually let's jump over to the um, the extra fantastic wonderful demo site that um, that Cheryl maintains let's just look at everything look at that let's look at our conference why am I not seeing it so the moral of the story is there is a link that you can add to your course status template. If you have that already, awesome. If you don't, get with your tech. <laughs> and it will allow you to share a course. You can send an email, hey, I thought you might be interested in this. This, was, this is a fun one. Ace Web Coding tends to be a little more confusing, I think would be a pretty good word for it, than the student manager stuff. But you know, right now the, the default one, send friend dot text. If you have it, great. If you don't, ask your tech about it. All of this can be changed at the suggestion of we are sending you information about one of our course offerings. And that just puts in a note. So say I decided to send Laurie, hey, I think you're interested in this. I do get the option to put in my own little message that would show up next. Then you get your course, name, a description, and then we let you register for it right, right from there. Again, if you have questions, you could add other links in here, you know, find us on Facebook to find out more, anything like that. So another really good one to take advantage of.
Okay. What's next? Wait list. Hopefully, all of our courses are doing very well. Registration is fantastic, and, and things tend to fill up. And when that happens, we don't want to, we don't want to miss anyone. So hopefully we all know that in Student Manager, on the ACEWeb Info tab, there is a box that says Allow Waitlisting on ACEWeb. If you check that box, you then give students the, the opportunity to add themselves to the waiting list if the course is full. Great thing about that is, if a seat opens up, you know about it. If, you're, you know, if you cancel someone in Student Manager, you get a little message, there's a wait list for this. You can then go look on the waiting list and contact the next person in line. The other really great thing about a wait list is that, say, you know, you had 10 people who didn't make it into the course. You can send them an email. Sorry you didn't make it to, into the course, but here are some other things coming up that you might want to consider taking. You know, similar, or we have another section of this. So if you're not using the waitlist option, you may want to consider it. So where did I go here? Back and forth everywhere. Are there any questions so far? Doing just fine, thanks. Okay, so I had on here somewhere a full course that I could enroll in it. There it is. So this class is full. I can add my name to the waiting list. I'm going to go ahead and check that. And before I do this, we will actually do this twice. The message that will go out is wait confirm. We're going to get the default one first. I'll do this twice. I'm going to add my name to the waiting list. And I get a new email. Waiting list confirmation. You've been successfully added. Someone from our office will contact you if you have any questions, and then your contact information. But again, you can use this opportunity to cross market. What I am putting in here, another line, meanwhile, you might be interested in these. I'm adding a template tag. I'm adding a function called show up class. We talked a little bit about this last time. It is an available feature in Student Manager. Also, we can use it in ACEWeb. There is some different coding for it. If you have questions about that, our help guide has it set up for you. Also, contact your tech. What this is doing is it's showing two months out based on the ID, so my student ID. Any of my interest codes that I have selected, if there are courses coming up in this amount of time with those subject codes that correspond, they're going to display in this email. So maybe I didn't get this course, but here are some others I may not have thought about yet. So let's go ahead and save that. And then go back. I'm going to have to log off and remember, let's see if I have that one, maybe, maybe of course. Let's just create another new account because sometimes that's easier. Me at Aceware, okay. I'm just going to build things in. Hopefully you have students who actually put the right stuff in, right? But in this case, we're just going to go with it. And again, I'm going to check some interest. So what I'm checking here, I'm adding interest codes. And that's how this show up class is going to work. 
great. I got an email. Welcome. And then I'm just going to head back to the course. So adding my name to the list. Great. And a new one comes through. Here we go. You've been added, so all of that is there. Meanwhile, maybe you might be interested in some other courses. So I'm getting those in this email because of the interest codes that I previously selected. Questions? Oh, but I love it. Awesome. Show up class was a wonderful new function a couple of years ago, and people really have not used it as much as they ought to have. Yes, it is a great one to use. So let's talk about the big one in ACEWeb, marketing campaigns. This is, it's not new, new, but I'd say within the past, what, year or two, this has been added. It requires some setup in Student Manager, as well as ACEWeb. So hopefully everyone can kind of see this. In Student Manager, in the same place as your email templates, in the same general place, I should say, module, catalog, there's one called marketing campaign. If you're still on 7.2a, it's there. Uh, but I am using 8.0 for this example. Marketing campaigns, it's the same kind of screen that you're used to with you know, creating a catalog record or an email template. You give it a code and a name and then there are two sections on here. One is the text that will display in ACEWeb. The other one is the email that the student receives after signing up for the campaign. So I created a plain one for us. Very basic, OK? Once we have that part set up and we save it, we go to this Contact Info tab. Now I will say, yeah, there's, there's a little something a little buggy there. But once it's saved, you get two fields here. People to notify, the same way when someone enrolls in a course, you could send a notification in the blind copy field. You can do the same thing with the marketing. And then you can add your own email subject and select a source code which is a code on a name record. You know, how did you hear about us? I believe is also one that fills in the source, but you know, we, we assign one here. So the next thing that you have to do, this is setting it up in Student Manager. So I've got a subject, I've got a code, I've got a name for it, I've got a message to go on our site, I've got a message to go in the email. We then have to set this up. We have to create a link. Where is it? To put anywhere on our website, anywhere in ACEWeb. Again, this is also available, the, the, all of the step-by-step -step directions on the help site. So you, know, you, you don't have to worry too much about memorizing this, this uh, URL. But the link that you create is looking for the code that you set up when you created the campaign. So once we have a URL, and you, know, you can make it say whatever you want. Mine's just sign up for our newsletter. You'll add it wherever you want it to be in ACEWeb. Also, say that you have an external department, departmental website. You could put this there as well to, to funnel people directly to a marketing sign up within ACEWeb an option. So here it is. Sign up for our newsletter. I'm going to click that. Oh, I didn't change the plain one. Mark it plain. I wanted to show you a basic one, and then we'll move to that one. So say, let's go back now. OK, sign up for our newsletter. Apparently, it doesn't want to work for me, but we're going to go with it. Let's try it there. 
Yay! All right, this is where you enter your web page text, right? So what was in the web page text area? And all we have to do here, I'm already signed in, so it knows. But say I had just put my email address in, and all these people have the same one. Who is it? Uh, it's going to be Lindsay L. So all I do is submit the request. Thanks for your interest. Your name has been added. And there's my email. Here's the subject that I had entered. You know, here's the email for our campaign. Could have used HTML, but this one didn't. Now, again, if you wanted to make it fancy, you could absolutely do that, which is this one. Again, you can add styles. You can decide where it's going to go. And this has its own email message. Thanks for signing up. If you have questions, and I will say you will find these three tags, help person, help phone, help email, in pretty much all of your email templates. These are pulling from your INI settings. If you're not sure what that is, if you're not sure if they're in there or not, ask your tech. Make sure that you have values. Otherwise, it's going to be blank. So. Let's go ahead and sign up for that now. There we go. So here's the example over on the right-hand side. That was the, the page, web page text. And then I submit. Great. New email. Here we go. So again, this is formatted. It has its own subject. Much nicer <laughs> than just a plain one. So folks may come back to read that one more than once. Make sure I covered all of that for you. I did. Any questions so far? Um, let's take a look. Okay. Could you add a logo? You can absolutely add a logo. Uh, let's say we wanted to do that. What we would do is now we could add it to the page or the email. So let's say we want to add it to an email. There is, and I will actually move over here so that you can see it a little better. There is a tag. I am source equals, we talked a little bit about this last week, and I'm also, I'll show you examples in other templates, but we can stick with this one for just a second. You have to save the logo. It has to be in a place that Ace Web can find it. So in your Ace Images folder is where any images need to be saved. Uh, let's see, it could be anything in here. We'll just throw in the calendar one. Why not, right? W Connect, Ace, Images, what was it? And then we close it off. So I'm going to copy that now. And I'm going to paste it, let's say, right under the email body tag. So there it is. And I'm going to go ahead and put a break in here. And I'll hit done and I'll save it. Okay, so now when we go back out to sign up for it, and it should let me out. Okay. Not that one though. Now it let me before, didn't it? Or was I just making that up? Okay. Let's uh, let's see Jason here for a second and submit. We get our email. It didn't like it. That was my fault. I do have an example in here for you, though, so we'll <laughs> go back through that in a second. Any other questions, Lori? That's it for now. Okay. So what I want to do, uh, we're going to talk about the registration confirmation again. This is the one that, I, I, more, more than any, you're going to be modifying the confirmations. Um, Ace Web, if you want to look at that one very 
quickly. Regconfirm.txt. I'm not going to go through tag for tag with you. There is a lot on here, and it can get very overwhelming very quickly. Uh, however, it's also good to have a reference. The online help is that reference. This is what I come back to time after time. We uh, Luckily, Chuck doesn't make us memorize these and take tests on them. Uh, that would be a whole lot of information. So each section, fees, locations, all of it is here for you. You can also customize the subject of this one. Hey, look at that. It's also in the template. Now, what's really fun to do with a confirmation? You can put in there a map for the location of the course. You can even put in the email a little box to get directions. You can enter your address straight from the email, click Get Directions, and it throws you out onto a Google map. It is brilliant. It is the coolest thing. Um, full disclosure, I actually pulled all the coding for it off of ACE Web, uh, because it is something that you can use on a location record. So if we go back out here, and we don't have it for that one, of course, example, do you see location on here? Come on, courses by location. ACEWARE headquarters should have it. There's a map here. Again, if you, if you have questions, if you, you know, don't have the template for this or something, ask your tech. We'll get you set up with it. I took the code out of here, and I put it into the confirmation. And I thought, surely this, this is not going to work, and I am wasting my time. I was really excited to see that it does work. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. Now, I will warn you, this only works if you have the location information, if you have the address on the location record. So let's see what we have for the Holiday Inn. And also, here it is on my demo. I sort of put in an address and get directions. So again, you know, students could be using this in ACE Web day to day. Just to double back, make sure we're all on the same page here, on a location record. Okay, information, notes, under the additional info tab, address, city, state, zip. If you put this information in, you can take full advantage of this feature. If you don't have the address information, unfortunately right now, the map will still show up, but it will be empty, and that's not helpful, and I'm working on a way to fix that. But this is, if all of you have addresses here, it's, it's set. It could also be a custom confirmation. So when I enroll in this course, enroll, great. Of course, I always hit the one that requires memberships and other things, because it certainly couldn't uh, be easy. Oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Which one was it? Maybe that one? It was the Kindle, wasn't it? Let's go back to that then. And enroll, because now I have my membership on here. Proceed to check out. Go pay. All the great steps that it takes to enroll. Done. All right, I have been enrolled. Go check my email. Here's my enrollment confirmation. Using the Kindle, we get our address on here. Here it is. Here's a map already in my email. So I, I don't have to say, I have no idea where the class is. And I can type in here my address. So let's say 123 Sesame Street, right? Why not? I hit Get Directions. 
Waiting, waiting. Hey, look, there's a Sesame Drive, apparently. <laughs> so if there was actually accurate information in here, so let's say, oh, it's in Mesquite, even. Yeah, let's just do that. It's going to give me all the directions. It will take seven hours from Mesquite, Texas. So really, really kind of a neat feature to use. Uh, if this is something that you would like to implement, let us know, and we can get you, wherever it is, all of the coding for it. There is quite a bit there, but this is pretty fun. Any questions? No, but that is pretty cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, where where did you before we leave this? Where did you populate yeah. the message about the parking that was above the map? Ah, I'll where did I? It. Let's see where that is. Ample free parking is available. That one. Yes. Okay, that is coming from the location record. So location information. is where you can type in information like that. You could have also put it in notes. But again, since this is a, a field in the location table, you'll need to make sure that the corresponding name is on the confirmation. So let's go, I've got like 12 of these open. City, state, zip, loc info. So here it is. If you don't have this, you want to look for something of, that has loc info in it. If you don't have this, let us know, ask your tech, and we can get it put on there for you. And we can help you, rather, put that on there. Anything else? I'm waiting, but I don't see anything else, so I think we're going to go on. All right. I did <laughs> set this up in Student Manager as well. Now, this one got all kinds of fun. So what I'm going to do is kind of, we'll, we'll back it up just a little bit. We talked last time about using report functions in Student Manager templates. Uh, report functions are things like namer, which makes you know the student name look pretty. You can say, "Give me first and last name and suffix," however that is. Uh, nice time is another common one. Makes the time look better. Add loc is one you can use to add location. I discovered that while location notes and location name was available already in the email receipt, address was not. So what I'm going to do is get rid of how many things here? Table with receipt table up to here. So I'm just going to cut that. So let's say I wanted to add the location information. I would use that function, welcome, and also all report functions, help guide. Under student manager topics, report functions. They are all here. There are so many. We were looking at add loc, so add location. It tells us what's required. So we have to have something that refers to the course. And then we put in the field that is missing that we need to get put in there. So we know that since we're in a registration, it has to correspond to the course. So RG, RG course, and actually, well, yeah, those were already in there. And then a comma, and then the field that we want, L-O-C-A-D-D-R-1. 
And then let's go ahead and just add a break there so it uh, shows up all right. And done. I'm going to save it. And let's go send me a confirmation. And print receipt. Send. That's great. Go. Here it is. This tiny little piece right here I was able to add. So now, let's show you what the map would look like. Where did it go? I may or may not have missed a quote in here. Also, most common things that you will run into when modifying these templates. And I'll go ahead and do this now. Remember we talked about text had to be in quotes? So I just removed a quotation mark from right there. Since I'm trying to put in an image, it's going to get mad. It's going to yell at me. But this way you can see anyway what it does. You get this giant error, missing operand. Missing operand is the error message. If, you, if you've left out an open quote or close or something like that, missing operand is what you're going to get. So know that if you have this error, that's what's missing. And it'll still let you send the email, but it will, in, it, it will not have anything from the message body. So you'll get, here's my image, and thanks for the interest. See you later. So that's kind of useless. So let's close it, and let's go back in there and try to figure out where I missed that. We're looking for an image tag. Finding it slowly. There it is. OK. So that leads to another point. I'm going to go ahead and start one new over here. If you run into that problem, it is sometimes really difficult, also really aggravating, to try to scroll through and find it. Even if you expand the field, there is so much happening in this that it, it, <laughs> it just gets to be difficult. What I recommend then, if you have, you can open Notepad, you can open Word, whatever you prefer to use, and actually go through it. So I see that this is some sort of function. I know that it's good. I see a plus sign. So what I tend to do is I'll break the line there. So I know that I'm adding something. And I see that quotes are starting here. So I try to follow those all the way across. To there. Go. That's actually in the wrong place. Let's start there. String. Here's another plus sign. So you just do this over and over. It lets you read the line a lot. It, it's much clearer this way. So there's just a side note for you. Save it. Me. Send it again. I should not get any errors this time. And if I do, all right, mail sent. So here it is coming through. Here's my confirmation. And you can see that an image, again, I, I included an image in here, so whatever you'd want to do. Registrant, here's my course, dates, times, paid, and again, get directions. So just like in the last one, I can put in all my information and get directions. And close that one. If this is something you'd like to, to try out, let us know and I can just send the code to you in a notepad document so you don't have to go through adding it. So really, really fun feature. Questions? For those of us who are uh, directionally challenged, we appreciate these maps. They're wonderful. <laughs> Indeed. 
All right, so two more that I'm going to show you. Uh, probably everyone sends out contracts to their faculty, and perhaps you ha are required to send them in an envelope, stamped, on paper, all of that. Maybe you aren't, or maybe you just need to kind of send one off again. You don't feel like printing it and mailing it just because the instructor you know, misplaced it or whatever. You should have in Student Manager already a contract agreement template. Very simple, instructor, instructor ID, name, address, maybe, you know, day, time, meeting, pretty simple stuff. And we can actually, now let's not do that. But say you wanted to, say you're trying to send contracts to folks who teach like five or six classes. And you don't want to have to print every single one, send every one on its own. You could send all of it by email. You could do this a few different ways. If this is the beginning of a term, you might want to email everyone all at once. So we know we would go to reports, faculty, contract agreement. I have already put in here the report. We have a report function called merge mail. What this function does, it's brilliant. After you close the report, it opens up and e it's like the email wizard, only it draws from all of your email templates. So rather than using a mass email wizard to type in your own message and subject and all of that, this, this does it for you. It also pulls in data from, you know, all over the place. So, you know, it's a just after. If you don't have it, you may need to modify the report to get it. But when we run that, select our query. I'm just going to run for a lot. Select my report. Close it. And we get this screen. Things that are important on this screen. One, all of the email merge docs. These are all of your templates. So I'm going to select the one that I think I was, uh, yeah. Now, when you select one, you have to double click it. And you'll get this warning message. If you got an error message, it may be the length. So again, any time that you're putting in just plain old text, which again is between quotes, you're limited to 254 characters. Good rule of thumb, you could break it up sentence by sentence. Put the first one in quotes, add your plus sign, add the next one. So you'll see the message with all the HTML from email, your subject. You can add attachments. Maybe you have you know, policies that they need to know. You could attach that document. You could send a copy to someone else, include your email signature, log the entry if you have. CRM module, it's a great one to have. That way when they say, I didn't get it, you can say, actually you did, I sent it on this day. Make sure that the merge type is transcript. Don't worry about the GPA stuff because this is going to instructors. But that way, all of the records are included in one email. And then we hit fire away, cross our fingers jumping through that hoop, which again is another issue that likely a bug. And we got our contract agreement. Here's Chuck. Here's his address. Dear Chuck, thanks for teaching for us. Here's some information. Here's your first course. The code, the title, the dates, the sessions, location, and your pay rate. And what this does is it gives you all of Chuck's courses based on my query, which was just 14F, so everything in the fall. Ta-da! So you do have other options for sending out those contracts. If you wanted to add a logo, I mean, you could go as far as, you know, scanning your letterhead in and saving the top portion of it as an image and putting it at the top and, 
you know, the bottom part down in the footer of the email. So it could look very official, even though it's going by email. That's another way to uh, make email work for you. Also, transcripts. You probably have students calling and asking for their transcript. You have a couple ways to send them. One, you could go right from the registration record. Now, hey, I need it for this course. Great. Again, it's a user-defined receipt. And it's one of these, maybe that one. Yes. You should already have a transcript template available. And you should also have an HTML transcript template available. So you can go in and make whatever tweaks you need to make and send it out. So if it's going to just one student, that's a good way to do it. Here it is, everything we need, any details, lovely. You could also send this to a lot of folks at once, the same way we did with instructors. Reports, registrations, transcripts, I find to be the best uh, way to get there. Again, you do need the merge mail function. If you don't have that on a report, you can either, you know, you can modify it, ask your tech for some assistance. That is there for you. And let's say transcripts for a particular course. And I'm going to do, again, 14F. The cool thing about this is you also have an option when you're sending transcripts to students through this reporting area to exclude classes. Maybe you don't want to have on their transcript something that you know, hasn't ended yet, or maybe they've already enrolled in stuff for you know, next semester, but you don't want to include that. You can have this here. Just so we get results, I'm not going to worry about excluding anything. Again, same idea. Here's the paper one. Here we go. We find it in here. Transcript, you know, you can change your subject. You can email the folks who are on the course notification in the, the notify field on the course record. Oh, and you want to make sure that you select, again, transcript. And fire away, and it's sending all of them. Yay. And here we go. Here I am. Here are all of them. I got a grade here, but not the others. My credits. All of my courses will show up. So, you know, somebody had just one. Laura, you were enrolled in one. It's there. If you know, were enrolled in multiples, it's, it's all there for you. So I think that is all I wanted to show you. So a couple of options of how you might use some of those emails, how you can edit them and include some, some pretty cool things. I'll stop now for questions. That's awesome, Lindsay. Good job. Thanks. Barb wants to know, can you attach more than one document? In the example, when you were sending the instructor contact with the email merge, could you have ah. sent an additional document? Yes, because sometimes you have to send two documents. You can. The best way to do that is to know the path that the document, know, to know where the document lives, right? They're probably both in the same folder. And so when you are doing all of this and letting it go, that way you can put the first one in. This is, this is what I find easiest. Contract, what was it? Was it that one? Yeah. You know, you can search for your attachments. That's one way to do it. But I think what I ran into, you put one in and then try to put another. Oh, no, yeah, it, it adds them both. <laughs> so never mind. Yes, you can add as many as you need to here. There we go. There's the answer. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> Yay! That, some, sometimes things are easier than I anticipate them being, and that's great. I would, um, well, no, yeah, that's good for now. That's good. Do you need a space between them? You do not. You just want to have a comma. Okay. 
let's see if that uh, see if it does what I, I don't think I'm using a little kind of free program since I don't have my own email server set up so it yeah it doesn't actually give me the uh, the attachments in here so sorry I can't show you that what else I think that's it Oh, okay. Well, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's try one more. Do you have to have Student Manager eight to be able to use the Reg Confirmation format? No, no, you do not. Um, this, all of this is also available in seven two, so you should be just fine. Unless somebody else comes in in the next ten seconds or so with okay. another question, I think that's about it. This well, was a cool. quiet group today. Very really well quiet. behaved. I must yes, say. Yes. Yes. Well, I hope I haven't overwhelmed anyone. Maybe we've, we've just been so, so into it, we haven't had a chance to think of questions. <laughs> well, if you do have questions, you may certainly send them on to Lindsay yep. at aceware.com. That's me. Yeah, people saying they're a little bit overwhelmed, actually. Oh. Sometimes the, the knowing that it can be done is half the battle. Yeah. Because you have your tech to help you do it. You just need to know that the possibility exists to do this. Yes, so. and that's a lot of it. And and also know that it, it may take some time. It may take a lot of trial and error. That's OK. I, I have fought with these for, for hours. For days, I used to fight with the confirmations, trying to get them to work. Um, SMU, though, has, has some uh, pretty cool ones now that only give out just the right contact information for each course. But. You have options, and that's the most important part. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, go forth and try out those options. All righty. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lindsay. Excellent Absolutely. job. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I should have done the slide for our next webinar, and I'll just tell you what it is. It's a year-end cleanup, and I will get the notice out in the next couple of days. So. All right. Thanks so much. Great. Thank Take you care, all. Have everybody. a good one. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.